Hi, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, this is a video about uh, my Minolta spot meter. Uh, I was asked to make this video, uh, happy to do so. Uh, but uh, so let's have, let's have a quick look at it. And take it out. This is the came in a nice case. This is the Minolta spot meter M. Uh, I've had it for decades, maybe 30 years. Uh, it's very old now of course and there's a whole bunch of uh, much newer, much fancier uh, all singing, all dancing, um, Sakonics and uh, other Minolta's since this. But this does, actually it does more than I need. Um, all I want out of a meter is to be able to find a decent exposure. Uh, and I can usually do the, calcula the calculations in my head. Uh, though this does have rudimentary um, memory functions and it will do the calculations for you and I'll say a little bit about that uh, as we go on. Uh, so mine is the M version. There is an F version, Minolta Spot Meter F, which does uh, ambient and flash. They're uh, pretty much identical. Uh, the F version has a sync socket and uh, ambient flash selector switch but apart from that not much difference at all runs off I can uh, avoid breaking the thing uh, one AA battery and I can tell you that battery has been in there for a really long time I can't even remember when I replaced this I'm sure I must have done but maybe not and you see, you, well, you won't see from this distance, but just here, there's a very tiny um, uh, plastic screw, and it's what uh, it's what I would call a trimming potentiometer. It allows you to calibrate your meter against other meters, so that if you're using more than one meter, um, you can get them to match. Now. I do use more than one meter, but I don't calibrate them to each other because I don't use them uh, together. Okay, so here it is, the Minolta Spot Meter M. A nice little lens cover. It's got a fixed focal length lens, and you can, in theory, get a, uh, a close-up attachment. Now, I believe that the focus of this is 1.3 meters through to infinity. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. The eyepiece at the other side, and you look through the eyepiece, uh, you see there's an appealing logic about uh, the layout, and inside the eyepiece you see a tiny little circle. That's, that's the area that's taking the reading. It's a one degree spot meter, uh, and at the front there's a little button, and that's the reading. Press that, you've You've taken a reading from that uh, area of your scene. Okay, and that's pretty much all I do with it. But I am going to go through the other, uh, the operation of it and the other um, sort of functions and controls. Okay. Okay, here we are. The um, controls on the Minolta M. All right, remember that if you've got a Minolta spot meter F, you'll have two more on here. You'll have a selector switch right here between ambient and flash, and you'll have a sync socket down here for uh, a PC sync cord uh, to trigger your flash. But mine isn't. Mine is just a, a, an ambient spot meter. And we've got the on-off switch at the top here. S-A-H, that's your shadows, average, and highlight. And we'll talk about what those do uh, presently. Memory clear button. Uh, try to get into the habit of using that uh, because this thing will store if you turn the power off it will store what's in the memory and you come back to it you're not quite sure what's there the orange button is the switch between the ISO value and the time value okay uh, I'm on time at the moment you can see a time of four seconds there's a little s uh, next to it there if the if that was blank if it was just the four that would be a quarter of a second you'll also get minutes in this, this goes down to 30 minutes. Uh, you start off with this in the ASA mode, there you set your uh, ISO value, okay, I've set 640 in this 
uh, at present. These keys uh, up and down allow you to increase and decrease. Okay, so if I press the up arrow, then I've gone, I've increased um, the shutter speed. It's now two seconds instead of four seconds. And you'll notice, I think you can notice that the F number changes um, alongside that. This uh, control varies between the F number and the EV value. And I don't ever really use the EV value, but it's there. Uh, that's the memory recall button. I don't think I've ever used that. And that's the memory store button where you can store your values into memory and we'll see how that works presently. Okay, so there's the controls. Let's see how we go about using this thing. Now, I've brought my other uh, meter because this isn't the flash meter and I wouldn't, uh, I would only use flash in the studio really. Uh, and I use my uh, ambient Minolta flash meter 5 uh, for that. So I brought that out to show you as well. Okay, okay. so let's get into uh, how this uh, operates. So I've got uh, an on-off switch. When I turn this on it takes a little while to... There, came up now. It takes a little while for the display to come up. Uh, makes me wonder if the battery is running out, but I don't really think it is. Okay, so let's go through it. So you turn it on and the screen comes up. You get uh, the analog scale uh, along the top. It's an analog scale of uh, f-stops. You It opens up into EV and ASA. ASA is the old words for uh, ISO, which you get on your digital cameras. And it always opens up at ASA 100. Okay, so the first thing to do is to set the ASA. You can't take any readings when it's in this mode. All you can do is set the ASA of your film or your sensor. Now you do that with these two buttons here, the two buttons with the arrows on that I showed you earlier, uh, increasing or decreasing. So uh, let's, let's increase. The ASA incidentally goes from ASA 3 to ASA 6400. Now, we all know why we might want 6400, but why on earth would we want 3? ASA 3. Well, if you are making paper negatives, for example, then you do want something like AS356, something like that. And I'm, uh, I'm working in wet plate collodion, which is actually about four stops slower than ASA 3. So I can dial in ASA 3 and... Uh, Oh, I might be making a mistake there. Let me just turn this. Uh, yes, no, I am making a mistake. I'm confusing it with the, with the Minolt, the um, ambient meter. This goes down to ASA 12. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, and it goes up to uh, 6400. Okay, so as, as I was saying, uh, ASA 12, um, uh, you might uh, you might be using a 25 ASA uh, Ilford film, for example, Pan F, I think is 25. Uh, and then you'd want to you know, you'd want to get your own exposure uh, value for that uh, film and your development, and that might well bring it to uh, ASA 12, which is only a one stop over exposure, for example. Uh, so down to ASA 12, up to ASA 6400, and I'm going to use the increase key, and I'm going to set our meter to 640, I think. And it's worth just saying that the ASA values uh, change in one-third stops uh, on this meter. Okay, so I've set my ASA, 640, so now I'm going to press the orange button, which would take me out of ASA mode and into time mode. And the time that comes up is a reciprocal, and it's um, in seconds. So it comes up uh, by default at a, a 60th of a second. And this will go, let's see what this goes down to. This goes down to, right, when I'm into seconds now, you get a little S. Now you get an M for minutes, and this will go down to 30 minutes. And it will go up to a lot. I think, and it, oh, I thought it was an 8,000th, but it's actually a 2,000th of a second uh, value. Um, 
you don't do much shooting at two thousandth of a second in large format let me tell you <laughs> so I'm gonna change it for a moment to an eighth of a second okay and then the final thing now you could leave EVs in EVs um, and once you've taken a reading the EV of course won't change uh, the EV is the balance between the f-stop and the shutter speed now if you uh, let's take a reading then then we'll uh, see so to take a I mean I've got some white cupboard doors over here uh, which are going to be ideal so I'm just going to take a a reading off that cupboard door and I get a reading of EV 9.7 okay now if I change my time I can use the down arrow key I've gone to a quarter of a second the EV doesn't change and it wouldn't it's an exposure value it's really kind of measuring an amount of light that's bouncing off that door and that isn't going to change what will change if I change from I use the F number EV selector and I change the F number now the F number from that reading is 8.0.7 so almost uh, well just over halfway between F8 and F11 now if I change from an eighth of a second to a quarter of a second my F number changes because those two things in combination uh, give you the exposure value All right, so a quarter of a second would actually be F11.7 just over halfway between F11 and F16 okay so I've changed back to uh, an, an eighth so if I were if I were taking if I were going out shooting that that would be my first uh, reading and I would be understanding that when I take that reading what the meter wants to do is to understand <coughs> excuse me, is to understand that the light it is receiving is to be a mid-gray value. So if I expose that cupboard door for an eighth of a second at f8.0.7, I'd get a mid-gray tone uh, on, my, uh, on my negative. Okay. Now, we, we obviously don't want that. And one of the things I might do, if I, if I were shooting, let's say you're shooting a wedding, and you want to preserve the detail in the bride's dress or I'm shooting a landscape and I want to make sure that I get detail in the um, waterfall one of the things I really hate about slow about long exposure photography is when the waterfall um, blows out so you might want to preserve that highlight for example so what I would then do is take that reading and then I would open up by two stops now uh, a middle value in your zone system a middle value would be zone 5 if I open by two stops I've taken my highlights to zone 7 so there's going to be plenty of detail in there uh, and I'm definitely not going to be blowing up the highlights and that's that's a calculation that I would do I would just uh, take that and I would add two uh, two stops to it sometimes two and a half stops so I might take that to I'm opening up remember I want more exposure to take a white thing from middle grey to something white. So I would go to uh, maybe F4, which would open that by just over two and a half stops. And I'd, I'd be uh, kind of on, on the limit of uh, blowing those highlights then. So maybe F4, maybe uh, F4.5, uh, just depending on what the scene was. And that might, that might be all I do. Now, this thing, will do that calculation for you. If I take that reading and I put it into memory, then on my analog scale, I get a little marker that, uh, that shows that's gone into memory. Now, if I press the highlight key, I'm telling the meter that actually I want it to calculate a reading for me that will maintain that highlight. I press the highlight key and I get another marker on the, on the analog scale and sure enough, gives me a reading of F, 4.0.4 because this um, this opens up at 2.3 stops to preserve highlights I do something between between two and two and a half if I'm doing it for myself uh, and presto there we are that's done that calculation for me now uh, what I'm going to do is clear that memory I'm going to go back now I'm going to take another reading so uh, let's just remember that off the white door we had f8 
point zero point seven at eighth of a second. Now next to that is my oven, and that's got a nice dark glass door. I'm going to take a reading off that dark glass door, and that gives me f two point eight point nine. Okay, so that's the contrast range. If I was shooting that little ensemble there, that's the contrast range uh, that that scene holds. Uh, so it's going from 2.8.9, which is very nearly f4, to about f8.5. So that's only two and a half stops. So any, any film will, will hold that. Um, probably even a Degura type. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, so we know that that's going to um, be fine. Now what we want to do is to decide how we how we want you know where do we want to place those tones. If we've only got um, what is that two and a half stops of uh, latitude in the scene, we can literally place that anywhere. We've got something like uh, what have we got six seven stops of usable range in a f uh, in a black and white film. Uh, if we want to maintain detail, texture, and tone, uh, so we can place that. We can place that two and a half stops anywhere we like along that um, scene. Now, again, it depends on the look that you want, and uh, black and white purists would want to expand that scale, and they'd use uh, n plus and n minus development times and all that, all that malarkey. I don't do that. Uh, because I develop with stand development or semi stand development to be to be technical uh, and then and then deal with the uh, deal with the contrast from there either in the because I make uh, I, I, I make my own emulsions um, we can vary the contrast of the uh, emulsion easily okay so uh, back to this thing then now I've taken a reading off there now uh, I can press the shadow key, right, and the shadow key will do the opposite. And remember, the meter is wanting to reproduce that tone as a mid gray, as a zone five, um, but it's a dark tone. It's the darkest tone in that scene, so we want to bring it down, and that means giving it less exposure. So we're going to go from roughly f4. We're going to close the uh, we're going to close the uh, aperture down. So if I press the shadow key, uh, let's press the memory key first, and now uh, then we press the shadow key, the S key, and sure enough, it gives me uh, f eight and a half um, for a nice for a nice dark tone. Okay, so there we go. That's kind of the uh, operation. I'm going to do memory clear again. Now let's do uh, one more. Uh, operation and then I'm just going to explain uh, the other keys uh, oh, I don't know there's anything else left to explain to be honest anyway let's do uh, one more operation so I've got that shadow value is now in my memory I'm going to redo the white tone and I'm going to hit the memory button again now Mm. Oh, I cleared the memory. Sorry, I'm just going to go back and do that shadow again. There we go. Put that in. Now I've got both of those uh, in the memory, and I get two little markers on my analog scale on the top here. Now what I can do, and this will only take uh, two values into memory. You'll get an error value if you try to put uh, a third one into memory. Now I get to do the average key. So let's do that. The average is uh, 5.6.3. So that's the calculated exposure, uh, eighth of a second, remember, uh, ASA 640, ISO 640, shows you how dark it is in here, uh, and it's calculated an exposure. Now, in truth, we could use almost any exposure with, with that, uh, with that uh, range of values. Uh, so 5.6.3 will be as good as any. Uh, but there it is, that's, uh, that's the Minolta Spot Meter M. It's uh, pretty straightforward to use, I think. You remember start um, in ASA mode, ISO mode, you set your ISO, press that orange key to take it to the time, and then you can vary the shutter speed up and down, 
and then take your reading and uh, and you get uh, a value. Now, just one or two uh, other points. I'm going to clear my memory. I'm going to go... I'm going to take the time and I'm going to... Right, I put the time up to two minutes, okay? And when I put the time up to two minutes, I get an error value in here. And on the analog scale, I get a little arrow pointing off the scale, telling me that actually um, I can't close the F number down far enough uh, for a two minute exposure. So if I now reduce the two minutes, oops, to say 30 seconds, now I'm back on the scale and I get a, a reading here. Okay, so if you have a if you have a setup that, you know, if your um, shutter speed is um, is going to give you an F number that's off the scale, it'll tell you and it'll tell you which way it's off the scale, so you can adjust your uh, shutter speed then to get the value that you want. Okay, so there it is. That's the Minolta. I hope that's been of. Uh, some interest and uh, helped you with um, with using that meter.